tonight we're going to continue on on a series that we're doing once a month on heart healing. And uh, that now we're going to continue on. Pastor Nick's right here. We're going to continue on with the Joshua series. In fact, Pastor Derek's going to continue on with it next week. And uh, so it's going to be a powerful, powerful time with him um, every time he comes. Uh, there's just a strong anointing in the house. And uh, so it's going to be great. But we're continuing on. So we're doing Joshua still. But once a month, we're doing the heart healing nights. And uh, it's just kind of, and, and do you like the table, by the way? It's okay. See, I'm trying. I'm really am trying because last time we both had like this little podium. We had both our iPads, one twisting this way and that way. So I was like, let me let me surprise this girl and put up a big old desk. And uh, so, so she looked at me. She goes, it's okay. It's the tone. It's so I big. Can... <laughs> I don't know if she really likes it, but I tried. Okay, girl, I tried. Um, but uh, we are excited because one of the things that is a passion of our heart is, is that scripture in First Thessalonians where, you know, Paul said, may your spirit, soul, and body be preserved, sound, and blameless until the day of our Lord Jesus Christ, till the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And there's just something about preservation. And, you know, a lot of people, you know, that's... When we talk about our spirit, that's fine. We'll, I'm going to break that down in a little bit. But also our soul is a thing. Our mind, our will, our emotions, our, 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 our thoughts, our decisions, our feelings. Um, that's often the place where the enemy wants to gain a foothold. And you have to realize the enemy, one, is the accuser of the brethren, and uh, if you ever get into a conversation where uh, somebody is just focusing in on the acute accusation of the brethren, then you need to know that that's satanic. Gossip is satanic. Well, I got an amen somewhere up in here. We're talking real practical tonight. We'll go to jo we'll back to Joshua and and we'll possess the land. But we're we're going to deal with some stuff right now and possess our souls. And uh, and so and so we have to be careful. But um, you know, the enemy, he, he, he wants to get a foothold also. The other part is he wants to get a foothold of our souls. And, you know, it's amazing how people can be in church and go to church and tithe and speak in tongues. Am I talking to somebody here? Yeah. And, and, and be depressed and, and walk in confusion. And, and it's, like, it's like water and oil. These things don't mix. But, but, but the enemy just wants to keep God's people bound and, and held up. And I'm not here to glorify the enemy, but we do have to understand that he go. He, we talked about the lion who roars. He goes around as a roaring lion, but he's not a lion. Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. And, 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 and so we just have this thing through our life experience, through our journeys. And as we go deeper into this each time, we'll talk more about that. And I'll share a little something tonight just on our experience of how the enemy wants to work and destroy our lives, our minds, our marriages, our children, our families. He wants to bring division in the church among God's people. And you all, I know, I mean, you just look at the history of this house, how the enemy wants to use different things moments in time and different experiences uh, to, to tear things apart and to push us backwards and to put us into places that God never intended us to, to, to walk in. We're supposed to be walking in righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Now, the world is the world, and we're in a finite and fallen world. And there's always going to be sin. There's always going to be sickness. There's always going to be challenges, trials, tribulations. But, but we're not of the world. And so, and so we're called to be overcomers in this world. So there's not this, this also this fanciful idea that everything's just going to be hunky-dory if you just get with Jesus. This is true. You have overcoming power with Jesus, but you have to overcome. 
And that's why, you know, I shared on Sunday, I think it was in the second service, that I love Revelations chapter 2 and 3 because in each church, no matter where, where they were, Smyrna, uh, Pergamos, Ephesus, Philadelphia, even Laodicea, there was always this company of people called the overcoming company of people. And so it lets us know that no matter where you are, no matter what you have been through in life, there is an opportunity for you to overcome. And so you look at people like Daniel, who were, was in, in Babylon for, for, for 70 years, and he had to learn how to overcome. How did he overcome? He, because he had character. He purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the king's meat. Uh, Shadrach, Meshach, Meshach, and Abednego, they would not bow down. Daniel would not stop praying. This is later on in his life. He would not stop praying, even though he was going to be thrown in the lion's den. They had to learn learn how to overcome. We have to learn how to overcome the enemy. Is that right? By the blood of the lamb, by the word of our testimony, and we love not our lives even unto the death. The, the third one people don't want to talk about. They want to talk about by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. But then it says you love not your life even unto the death. That's some serious stuff right now. That's, that, 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 that's, that's laying down your life for the gospel, for Jesus. And, 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 and I'll tell you, people are doing that on a daily basis all over the world. But there's a thing called overcoming power. Esther was an overcomer. And, and, and you look at Esther, and, and, and she had to overcome. She had to face uh, the spirit of Haman, that, 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 that Holocaust spirit that wanted to take God's people out. She had to stand up, and she had to make a decision. If I perish, I perish. But I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to raise my voice, and I'm going to tell, I'm going to expose Haman. I'm going to let everybody know who this guy is because, because that's who I am. My name is Esther. I'm a star, and Esther in the Hebrew also means she who exposes evil. And so she just, that's what she understood her assignment, that that's what she was supposed to do. And so I just believe, and I want to speak this 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 possibility, this hope, this, this concept that God's called us to be the overcoming company of people in this hour who are going to overcome. And one of the areas that we need to overcome is the stuff that's happened in our histories and in our souls. And why in the world does David and the sons of Korah and Ethan the Ezraite, and, 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 and you look at Asaph and all the different authors who wrote the Psalms, because David only wrote 75 out of the 150, but they all spent time talking about the soul. <laughs> Why soul? Talking to self-talk, talking to yourself. Why are you so disquieted? Why are you shut down? Why are you shut up? Why, why, why are you allowing the circumstances that are around you? The Sons of Korah wrote that in Psalm 42. You know, why, why, and 43 as well, they wrote the same thing. Why are you shut up? Why are you disquieted? Soul, put your hope in God. And yet, you have to talk to your soul. How many talk to yourself sometimes? You got, you, it's best to talk to yourself if, if you're putting your hope in God. Because self-talk, self-talk is what oftentimes people have when they put their head on the pillow at night. And you haven't talked to yourself all day long. And so now you're processing. And that's when your hopes and your fears and your concerns and your worries. And every, if, if you notice that, you put your head on the pillow and then it's 3 a.m. You go to sleep, good for you. But that's, that happens when you, you're going through things. But there's something about talking to your soul. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul, and all that is within me, Psalms 103, 1 through 3, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. And bless the Lord, I like this one, oh, my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Do you realize that the best benefit package that you can get is not working for Tesla? But there's a benefit package when you come into Jesus. Forget not all his benefits. He heals all our diseases. Come on, somebody. You, you go on and start reading all that. That's one of your assignments, Psalm 103, verses 1 through 3. He, 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 he works things in your life. He, he deals with your iniquities and your pains and, your, and he heals your body. And you look at that. It's just powerful. And, and so there's something about the soul. And we're going to break this down here. But I want to, here, here, here's, here's the verse the Lord gave me for, for tonight and then, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a little bit more talking than she does tonight unless she just picks up the mic and interrupts me, which you can at any given time, girl. 
That's not a problem. But what our goal is, we're going to share, I'm going to share a verse, I'm going to share a few things about spirit, soul, and body, and where we're going over the next few heart healing nights, and then we're going to hone in on one of those things, and she's going to share on that, and then we're going to give you a couple practical things to, to take home to work on, and then we're going to have ministry time. I got some oil. We got some oil ready to go. We're going to have ministry time up in here. Some people just, just sometimes you just need a fresh anointing and fresh oil. And one of the, one of the things God's going to do tonight, two, two things God's going to do, he's going to heal some people in their soul, and then he's going to heal some people in their body. And guess what? You're going to prosper. Your body's going to prosper. Your life is going to prosper. Your finances are going to prosper as your soul prospers. Somebody said, yeah. That's in 3 John. And so I want to read this verse, though, because I have, I have one phrase that I want to, want to speak into somebody's ear and even into your spirit, and maybe the babe within you might leap for a second. Is that okay? That's what happened when, 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 when Mary said hello to Elizabeth. The babe leaped inside of Elizabeth. And so maybe something's going to leap inside of somebody just off a of hello. Have you, ever, have you ever said hello to somebody? And it's just something jumped inside of you. You just get on the phone, hello, and something jumped. Something's going to jump inside of somebody here right now. In Mark chapter 4, and verse 26 through 29, Jesus is, is, is speaking these kingdom illustrations, these kingdom parables to, 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 to his his. His disciples, and it says in this one, one it says in, in verse 26, and he said, the kingdom of God. Can somebody say the kingdom of God? Jesus always brought the kingdom of God into his illustration. So we understand this is about the kingdom. Who is the king? Jesus. Come on, somebody. Who's the king? Jesus. Jesus. Who's the church? The church is the messenger, and the kingdom is the message. And so he's dropping the message down on us, all right, from the king, from the throne. So it says, the kingdom of God is as if, can somebody say as if? It is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground and should sleep by night and rise by day and the seed should sprout and grow. He himself does not know how. For the earth yields crops by itself. Can somebody say by itself? By itself, the word by itself, this is where we get the word automatically, autos in the Greek, by itself. So when you put the seed in the ground, it automatically begins to be activated. You do your part, put the seed into the ground, and then let the seed do what it's built inside of it automatically. All of a sudden, it says, for the earth yields crops by itself. Can somebody say automatically? And then here, watch this, because this, this is the picture I want you to have tonight. It says, first the blade. Can somebody say first the blade? And this is a whole other teaching. I'm not getting into all the details. But first the blade. Some, now say, then the head. After that, the full grain in the head. And then, and watch this, and this is, but when the grain ripens immediately, he puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. Can somebody say the harvest has come? So he, he, he basically is giving us the different parts of harvest. You put in the seed and you wait, right? But then he says, here's how the harvest begins. First the blade, then the head, and after that the full grain in the head. The grain, the wheat grain in the head. So the blade pops up. The head forms for the grain to come forth, and then the grain is sitting right there, and you know that the harvest has come. And at that point, that's when you take the sickle, and you begin to collect the grain, and then you take it to the threshing floor and sift the wheat so the shaft, the outer shell, falls off of the wheat, and all you have is the pure grain, the pure word of the Lord. Amen? But it says here, first the blade, then the head, then the grain, the fruit in the head. And I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, and the Lord just spoke to me tonight about this because I want to share this as we're talking tonight, that whatever part in your harvest that you're in right now, 
I want you to know that it's in the works. I need to make a prophetic announcement in this house because right now you might be just looking at a field with a whole bunch of seed in it and you're sitting here going, how long? Well, I got an announcement for somebody. The rain came today. <laughs> did somebody hear, did you feel or see that rain? The rain came and then with the rain, there came a double rainbow. Can, 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 do, we had a video. Can we play that video real quick? There was a rainbow, but there are also reports of double rainbows. I said, Will, I saw your picture on Facebook um, of the double rainbow, the double promise of God. How many know the rainbow is, is, is from the Lord? Just want to remind somebody that it's from the Lord and the rainbow is, is, is speaks of God's promise. That he's not going to flood the earth again. Can you imagine God put that in, in light with light and water, created the rainbow as a promise. And so I got an announcement for somebody, no matter where in the harvest process it might be, your seeds in the ground, they might be at the blade season, it could be at the head season. It could be a grain just kind of beginning to form a season. I got an announcement for somebody. It's in the works. It's in the works. And that's what we're dealing with even here as we're talking about this. It's in the work. I'm talking about total health. And total health is not just merely the absence of mental or emotional or physical sickness or disease. But it is... This dynamic, and I want you to catch this, and I want you to see this personally yourself. This is a dynamic and harmonious interaction of spirit, soul, and body. God wants to work in total health inside of us. That's what Paul said in that scripture. And again, let me just read the entire scripture in First Thessalonians 5. The very God of peace sanctify you wholly. So you can't even get into holy in, uh, in, into this until you get into being sanctified. And, and, and so sanctification, always you look to the laver for all you Moses Tabernacle students. And you look to the laver, and the laver is the place of baptism. It's the place of immersion. It's the place of sanctification, where we are sanctified to be sanctified, to be made holy. And so it says the very God of peace. I want to speak this into somebody here. Somebody say shalom. The God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then he says this, faithful is he that calleth you who will also do it. He's faithful. And he's going to accomplish it. And so when we talk about total health, can somebody say total health? It begins with the realization that we are made, and we're, I'm going to keep saying this, we realize that we're made of three distinct parts, spirit, soul, and body. And the most important part of you is your spirit. The, the, what is the thing that died when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden? It was their spirit that died. And, 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 and that's why, um, you know, Jesus told Nicodemus in John chapter 3, he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, you must be born again. And Nicodemus didn't understand this. He, he asked Jesus, well, how can a man be born again except he enter the womb a second time and be born? But there's something about your spirit. Your spirit is the thing that is going to live to get to live forever with God. And so when God created Adam and Eve in his likeness, the, the, there's this spirit nature that God also put in Adam and Eve that no other animal and, and if anyone in evolution wants to say that you are from an animal, it's a lie in Jesus' name. But we are, we are made of God's spiritual nature. And we know that according to John chapter 4 that God is spirit and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. We need both parts. We need the truth part. 
but we also need the spirit part. Is this okay? And so your spirit is the part of you that's able to connect and communicate with God's spirit. And, and, and so with your spirit, you can discern the realities uh, that are beyond even realities that you can discern with your soul. Now, your soul, again, is your mind, your thoughts, your, your thinking, your intellect, your will, the place where you make your decisions. And I, I say this, and some people get shocked, that what is the strongest will that is in the earth? Is it God's will? No, it's man's will. Why do we know that? Because God gave us the power of choice, and we can override God's will. Starting with Adam and Eve, you can override God's will and say, I'm going to do what I'm going to do. That's why Jesus brought restoration in the garden of Gethsemane, and he said, not my will, but your will be done. That's a great stance for us to live by. We need to live by that, 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 that mantra, that understanding, not my will, but, but your will be done. And so that is the, where our soul lies. And then, of course, our emotions. And by the way, we all have emotions. We all have, sometimes we, we think, well, the ladies are more emotional than the men. No, that's not true. We just have a different ways of, 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 of displaying our emotions, but we all are emotional. We all have feelings. Is that right? And so, and, so, and so this is very, very important. And so there's this understanding that we have three distinct parts of us. And that in, in Scripture, you'll find there's the law of the spirit. There's the law of the mind, the soul. And there, then there's the law of the sin in the body. Which, which, which we'll get into a little bit here. But as we're going forward, we're talking about the goal of total health. And so your total health is what we're talking about. Our total health is what we're talking about. Do you want to add anything here? I'm just going to leave me here. So we're going to get to these. Let's get to these parts because we've got to move. There are five factors to health. Are you going to, are you going to work with me on this? Or are you just going to watch me? You need to say, if you're going to just watch me, you're going to say amen a little bit more. I need a little bit more, a little more, don't shout me down now, girl. Oh, I'm going to do the overview and then you're going to do the, the one. You're going to land this thing. Okay. <laughs> I knew that. Teamwork, exactly, so there are five factors, and we're going to get into this, and we're going to only get to get into one tonight, the first one. But there are five, and we're going to come back to this. But there are five factors to to health, and this is going to get really um, personal <laughs> into our lives. And so the first one is what we think. Can somebody say what we think? And so our intellect, our thoughts, they actually. In the physical realm, do you realize this? That they travel through what we call the limbic system. Have you ever heard of a, a limbic system of the brain? And, and so this, this actually uh, directly affects our bodily functions. Your thoughts affect your bodily functions. Isn't that amazing? And so we'll, this is a whole thing that we're going to be dealing with. But re researchers have found that there's a connection between the limbic system, again, in your brain, and emotional memory. And, and so this includes positive thoughts like love, memories like joy, like uh, peace. And then negative thoughts like anger, like guilt, like shame, bitterness, lust. Uh, fear, greed, envy. Um, there are different uh, things that flow through our system and all of our emotional memories are stored up and can be consciously or even subconsciously stimulated by the senses. And so our brain uh, and our heart and our intestinal tract. We have three different areas where neurotransmitters flow through. It's not just your brain, but it's also your heart. Your heart is an electrical system. And also your stomach, they call it your second brain a lot of times, your intestines. In those places, there are neurotransmitters and the thoughts of your heart. Have you ever had a thought that made you stick to your stomach? How many know what I'm talking about? 
And, and, and so, so they, they, they travel through the thoughts of our heart. They, they can cause the greatest change in our body even more than food. Let me give you a scripture. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. The second thing, we're going to go back to this. The second thing is, somebody say what we think. The second one is what we say. Okay, so what, what does the scripture say? Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And so your tongue is powerful. James talks about it in so many different ways. It's like a rudder. It's like, a, it's like an arsonist. It can start forest fires. <laughs> your tongue is powerful. And, and, and so and, and, and that statement that God said death and life are in the power of the tongue is more meaningful than we most realize. Because let's just talk about positive words. Somebody say positive words. Positive er, words carry energy. They bring health. They can bring peace in Jesus' name. When I start saying stuff like there's hope, and I've been trying to speak some with different people recently and saying there's hope in your situation. And somebody told me, he goes, I've, nobody's ever told me that. Well, let me tell you something. There's hope. And God wants to speak a word of hope inside of you in the midst of darkness. It's not over, baby. And so you start talking like this and, and, and begin to speak. All of a sudden, it, it, it changes atmospheres and, and it brings forth peace. Whereas negative words can bring confusion. And they can, they can, they can also cause disease. Positive words are words of verbal blessings. Sometimes, and, and one of the things I talked about on Sunday was, remember the crow on the back of the eagle? <laughs> pecking at it and trying to bring it down and the eagle doesn't pay the crow no mind. I think we got to do that sometimes. There's some things we don't even need to even give our attention to any longer. What does the eagle do when a crow's on its back? It just ascends to a level that the crow can't breathe and it falls off the back of the eagle and, and faints and falls to the ground and dies because it's lack of oxygen in its head. But the eagle keeps ascending, and there's got to be something where we ascend, where we go higher above the situation. And I'm not just talking about just any, I'm talking about every day, where somebody's talking crazy to you. Don't, don't, don't match their crazy. Ascend. Can I talk to you here? When somebody, when, when somebody even in your own house is having a hard time, a bad day, ascend. And invite them to ascend with you, or just let them be a crow and just have their day. But there's something about the, the, the power, uh, and, and it's not just the power of positive thinking, but there is something powerful to it. Because huh. a man, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Think on these things, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are praiseworthy, whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Think on these things versus negative words. Negative words are curses. And they don't just curse you. If you're cursing somebody, the curse is coming back on you. It's like the pointing of the finger. You're pointing a finger at somebody, you got a bunch of fingers pointing right up back at you. Negative words are, are, are mocking, they're, they're, they're ridicule, they're gossip, they're false accusations. They are venom. They are poisonous. And they affect our physical bodies. I keep coming back to that. Whereas you read Deuteronomy 28, there's blessings and there's cursings. And so I won't get in. We'll, we'll go to that another time. But somebody say what we think, what we say. Number three, what we do. So God designed man to function in this intricate cause and effect sequence. Huh. And it's, it's the scripture where in Galatians chapter 5, where chapter 6, where, where Paul says, be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap everlasting life. And so what we do is important. What we sow is important. And the next one, here's the next one. This is going to get rough now. 
told you it was going to get rough. So what we think, what we say, what we do, we're talking about health factors, what we eat. Oh my gosh, I just saw that video. Oh my gosh, I was on Instagram and they had this reel and they were showing how they make imitation crab. See, I'm Californian, and so we like sushi, you know, your California rolls and all this stuff. But we had and the ocean, so it was real and fresh. Yes, and so, but we go to H-E-B and get, you know, a California roll, and sorry, H-E-B, sorry, am I saying this out loud, and uh, I can't do it no more. I saw this video, and it was, it's like this glump of preservatives and this stuff and then they put this orange dye to make it look like it's a crab wrap around it and they cut it in these slices and oh, I don't want to talk about it <laughs> but eating nutritious food drinking plenty of water somebody say agua por favor getting proper ex exercise in, cl in inhaling clean air and absorbing sunshine vitamin D are important because every cell of our body is supplied with nutrients necessary. We need vitamins and minerals. And we'll, we'll get into this. I'm gonna I'm gonna do a whole health seminar this fall here. It's not just a health nut seminar, so we're all just walking around eating celery sticks <laughs> and kale, but we're talking about health and healing God's way. And uh, one, of my, one of my cousins, actually, she, this is what she does for a living. She actually clears people of medications and of diabetes and hypertension. And, and she does this all day long, all over the place, and helps people with their, their, their lymph nodes and clearing their systems and all these different things. And I just think that if we're going to preach the gospel, we've got to preach the whole thing, spirit, soul, and body. And so we have to have things where we're, 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 our bodies are, are well-oiled machines. And so I got to work on it too because I came to Texas. I got to get back in by playing weight, but but we have to realize that 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 our health is important. And then the fifth one, the last one, because I'm going to hand it to to my girlfriend here. Um, well, actually, and I want to say something about medical on medical field too. But so what we think, what we say, what we do, what we eat, and then what we inherit is a part of our health factors. And so we all have what we call a genetic predisposition. And, and, and it came through Adam. Because when you look in Romans chapter 4, the scripture is very clear. It says, by one man's sin entered into the world and, by, and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men for they all have sinned. And so can you imagine that there's something that has been passed and we've inherited something through the Adamic line. And that, that, that's the death culture. And that also has to do with diseases, genetic tendencies that are in our bodies. And they affect our immune systems. And I'll talk about this another time. How they've done studies where one generation could live to a certain age but have bad habits in their food, or maybe a different addictions, but they'll live to a certain age, but their next generation won't even live to half the age because something has been put into their disposition. And then the third generation, they found this, and you find, start talking about the scriptures where I'll visit even to the third generation. The third generation, oftentimes, teenagers and young adults will not even go beyond that age because something has been passed down genetically and so they have this disposition inside of them um, that, that affects their immune systems and makes them weak and disease is handed from generation to generation through families. Ooh, that was deep. Now let me talk about the medical field real quickly because I worked in the medical field because I, I, I want to say something about pharmaceuticals. First of all, pharmacia is the Greek word for witchcraft. Whew. I don't know how many amens were on that one. But let me say this. There is a place for pharmaceutical prescriptions. 
oftentimes pharmaceutical prescriptions people need to live. There are other pharmaceutical prescriptions that people, they need to be seen as a bridge, not a sentence. Sometimes people need certain medications to bridge them through seasons, but unfortunately, a lot of those medications are so toxic and addictive, it goes beyond a bridge. And by the way, a bridge fell down, and we just pray for everyone in Baltimore right now. And all that, all that, those families that were affected by this, this bridge falling down, we just pray right now, Lord God, for in, in the place where they can't even make any sense of this, we just pray for the comfort of the Holy Spirit to just be upon them in Jesus' name. But oftentimes with medications, medications can, and there's medical people in this room, I know, um, it can move beyond what it was original intention. It was maybe to help you get some sleep for a while, but now it's just holding you together because you, you, you've become addicted to it. And there's some medications like benzos that are, are 10 times more addictive and 10 times harder to get off of than heroin. And so, and so you look at that and you realize that there's a lot of toxins inside of that and you take something for one thing and it creates a side effect and creates a, a need for another thing. And all of a sudden, somebody has a pile of different pills and how many pills do you take? Well, I'm taking 13 pills a day and, and, and you don't even know what it was. Instead of going to the root cause... And by the way, the leaves of the trees are for the healing of the nations... And a majority of, of, of medications and pharmaceuticals are just mimicking something that God's put in nature. Is he, getting, is he on a health nut kick here? No, I'm not. I'm just telling you the truth about the, 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 the medical system because this is important. But what we've had is we have people who are increasing their medications, their drugs, and, and, and actually drugs are actually forming more diseases and, and, and so it's very hard to, 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 to clean that stuff up. And so I'm not against the medical field. I believe the medical field has a place. Doctors, I work with doctors, talk to doctors all the time, nurses and different people in different areas of research in the medical field. I love them. And I believe that doctors is a revival that God wants to even bring in the medical field. Because I, I actually have a compassion for doctors, just doctors alone. I feel like they're just like pastors in a lot of ways. Doctors oftentimes, they are some of the most insecure people that I've ever met and also just people who are actually addicted to a lot of the stuff that they're putting out for people. And so, and so I have a passion for the medical field and for doctors and nurses because, oh my gosh, I've just seen so much. But God wants to, there's a place for the medical field. There's a place for medicine. There's a place for all of these things. I'm not against it. Please don't go out saying, Pastor Patrick spoke against the medical field, against drugs. No, but I'm saying is we have to have wisdom. Because oftentimes they'll put you on something and you don't even know what you're taking. You just take it blindly and not realizing... When they give you that, that 17 pages of side effects. Have you seen the commercials on TV? This is going to help you feel good. You could die. You could have confusion. You could have impotence. You can be in depression. And that's like half the commercial is just telling all the stuff. Yeah, very quickly too. It's like... And then the music comes back on, take this drug. You don't even know what you're taking. It's weird that they have commercials to people who are not just us telling us to tell the doctors what to give them. Us? Well, that doesn't make it's sense. illegal in majority of countries. Like you go to Canada, you'll never see one of those commercials. You go to Germany, you'll never, England, you'll never see those commercials. But here we just love it. And there's just this romantic music playing. And it's like, before you put something in your mouth, Find out what it is, what's in it. Is that okay? Well, We're talking about health factors here, and this is part of heart healing. And but I think that, and one other thing I just wanted to say, that we're saying all of this out of our own experience. Like, yes. we've actually lived this out, getting off of medications and these type of things. So we're just, that's what we're just sharing. It's I not was, like we're judging anybody can or I anything. Tell, can yeah. I tell them? I was on, a, 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 for sleep, I went through a... Um, I got a parasite in my body when I was in Africa one time, and it knocked out my hormones, my nervous system, my sleep, my digestive system. I lost 65 pounds in 
30 to 40 days, something like that, right? For maybe maybe 60 days, but something crazy. I was I looked like like I was going, and they put me on Kalonzapam, Kalonapen. It's called that. It's called the mother of all benzos, and they put me on four milligrams a day. If you know anything about Kalonzapam, you will know that that is absolutely insane to put somebody on that much. And some people, most people are on 0.5 or 1 mg, but four in a day. And the reason was, was because I had insomnia, because I could not sleep, my nervous system was tripped, and I was just, I was, I was a mess. I actually had to take a leave of absence. I was down in bed for nine months. Couldn't lift my head off the pillow. You remember those days. Couldn't lift my head off the pillow. I mean, I had Bishop Garlington, Bishop Sharona, different ones calling me every single day, just checking me. Just it was it was it was a terrible, terrible season in 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 our lives. And they put me on this medication, and it literally took me 12 years to taper off of Kalonzapam from four milligrams down to nothing. And when I got the revelation that I was going to sleep without it, but my body, my brain, because it, it's part, it, part of your GABA, which is part of your hormones, my GABA, was well, everything was a mess in my brain. Is it okay if I talk real like this? Is it okay? Because um, I, I have nothing to hide. <laughs> um, but but it, was, it was a mess in here, and so... We had to walk it up. That's one of my things. My cousin helped me. She helped me walk it off and taper it down and taper it down to the point where I was taking dust of the stuff because I thought I needed it because they tell you you're going you're gonna to have seizures. You're going to do it. And I'm just sitting there going. To the point where I got off of it, but it took 12 years. And so Pastor Marlene is right, like, when I'm talking about these drugs, I'm mad at them. I mean, the, another, another drug they gave me one time was a drug called Seroquel. I took Seroquel one night because I didn't know what I was doing. And I took, that, I took that, that med, and I saw the devil. That whole night, you talk about pharmacia, witchcraft, it opened up a demonic realm where I saw this demonic realm and the next morning, I took that bottle and I put it on the desk of the doctor's office. Because this is before the clonzepam. And I said, don't ever give that to me again. And I was a pastor in San Francisco Bay Area with a church of about 6,000 people. I was on television. And I just put myself out there and I was like, you can have that. I was mad. And I just walked out of there. But I'm just, we're saying all of this. And I'm being very, very, very transparent. We're saying all this because I still believe in the medical field. I worked in it for six years myself. And I still believe in doctors and all of this stuff. But we need to move with wisdom. I don't know why this, this heart healing turned into. But this is, I think this is important. We need to know the truth. Is it okay? And we're still on this journey. And so we're not saying we know everything. But we've learned a lot. So now... I hand it to you, girl. Okay. So I don't know if you guys see there's a QR code on this, um, on this top banner up here. So you can go ahead and scan that with your phone. We wanted to give you some practical things to work on. I know I talked about it last time, to take home with you, like some homework. Um, so we had talked last time about heart lies, and those are things that your heart believes from life. So I wanted to, I picked just two heart lies, and not everyone is going to have these, but they're like common ones. Um, so two heart lies, and um, you, I'm going to teach you how to do it, to do the cards. Okay, can you zoom in on it? Okay, so... Tell me when you get it pulled up. I wanted to give it to you so you can take it home with you because this is going to be your homework. And so we're going to, I picked two heart lies. The one, one of them is something that your heart believes. You might not even know that you're, you believe this. You're like, oh, I, I'm fine. Like, I don't think that. But um, 
ask God, like, do I, is this really in my heart, you know? So the first lie is, I don't have enough, and struggling is a way of life for me. Do you guys have the, it pulled up on the? Oh, okay, they put it up behind you, okay. We'll put it in the Keras 7, too, so you can also download it there if you can't get it. So next week, it'll be in Keras 7 on Tuesday, yeah. Um, so the first slide is, I don't have enough, and I struggle. struggling is a way of life for me. So I grew up with um, my father, and he made a lot of money, but he always told us he didn't have any money. <laughs> and it makes issues for you <laughs> growing up. So, a lot, you know just a lot of stuff, <laughs> interesting things. And it plays out in your life later when you're an adult, these kind of little things that you don't notice. So, um, but that lie creates these kind of feelings. So if you've ever felt these kind of feelings, it would like trapped worthlessness, anxiety, misery, frustration, anger, regretfulness, inadequate or bitterness. But so what we do to combat this lie is we replace the lie of the enemy with God's truth. And so if you go to the next slide, um, it'll say the truth. And so the truth is I have enough and I'm able to provide for myself and my family. God cares for my every need. I will be faithful with my tithes and trust God to give me the wisdom for the rest. And this is what we were saying with what we think, number one, that we talked about tonight, and what we say. So saying these truths out loud is what I want you to do this week. Saying these truths, because you can just read it, and that's good. But speaking it out loud with your words. Let me, let me add this, too. So the thoughts of our heart, whether it be a lie or the truth, dictate our belief system. Mm -hmm. And our belief system is what determines what we think, what we say, and what we do. Mm -hmm. You want me to say that again? Mm -hmm. So our heart, are our, our, the thoughts of our heart, if they're true or if they're a lie. And that's where the enemy wants to keep sowing lies because he's the father of lies. But Jesus is the way and the truth and the life. And so the thoughts of our heart dictate our belief system. And our belief system determines what we think, what we say, and what we do. And so this is what she's talking about here. When she's talking about heart lies, these are things that we, we're thinking in our heart. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And so there are lies that we believe because of experiences that we've had or things that we feel like we've missed for many different reasons. And they all of a sudden, these thoughts turn into they're not the truth. They're lies. And so this one that she's talking about here, I'll hand to you, but I just wanted to yeah, even explain. We want to exchange the lie of the enemy with the truth from God's word. Yes. And so I put on here a main scripture, but at the end there's more scriptures you can look at and read them out loud. I'll read the main one. It said, and this same God who takes care of me will supply your needs from his glorious riches, which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. And then the, when you feel like, okay, when you start feeling these feelings about it, strength, importance, inspired, determination, contentment, at ease and rest, that's when you know like, okay, this lie is turning, it's getting replaced and God's truth is really um, going down into my heart. Okay, so that's one for this month. And then also the next um, heart lie, Okay. Let's practice it. Let's so go back. Go back to the the, okay. the first one, first slide. Okay. So let's all say the lie. Ready? I don't have enough, and struggling is a way of life for me. <clears throat> so this lie creates what? Feelings of being trapped, worthless, yes. anxiousness, yes. misery, yes. frustration, anger, regretfulness, inadequate, and bitterness. I want you to stop here for a moment. And just want you to take in that line. I don't have enough. And struggling is a way of life for me. Just close your eyes for a minute. I want you to think about this. I don't have enough. You know, what do they say right now? There was a statistic. Is it like 
70 something, mid 70s, like 72, 73, 74% of Americans live from paycheck to paycheck. And then gas prices keep going up and grocery prices keep going up and energy prices, it keeps going. And <laughs> you're living off of what you had for yesterday, but now we have inflation. And so here is this phrase here where I, won't, I don't have enough and struggling is a way of life for me. And so then all of these, these emotions start coming up and this is real. I just want to stop for a minute and just hover on this for a second because you're onto something here. This is real. And so you have all these different things where it comes into your spirit and what do you do? We have to replace that with the truth of God's word because our God is the supplier of all of our needs according to his riches in glory. Amen? That's why David said, my cup overflows. And so I believe that God's raising up a company of people of Jeremiah 17 people who understand the juxtaposition of <laughs> cursed is the man who puts his trust in man and blessed is the man who puts his trust in the Lord. And when you put your trust in the Lord, the scripture says, your leaf will always remain green. You will not see when heat comes, when famine comes, when drought comes, your drought proof. And this is not just some name it and claim it, blab it and grab it type of gospel. But we are people of Goshen. We can dwell in the midst of Egypt and the plagues of Egypt will not come nigh unto us. Somebody's got to believe that. That's Old Testament, Old Covenant, and we have a better covenant in Jesus, and he's going to take care of us, and if he has to give us manna in the wilderness once again, he will do that, and water from the rock and quail from the sky, he will do that. Amen? Because he is Jehovah Jireh, our provider. He's the one who stands on the mount and looks ahead and makes a provision in advance. Your provision, can I speak to somebody, is... And while you're, I've told you this before, when, when Abraham and Isaac are climbing up one side of the mountain, a ram is coming up the other side of the mountain, and the provision, it's on its way. Somebody say, it's in the works. Okay, go ahead, girl. Sorry, I had to preach there for a minute. Yeah, read the truth. Let's put the truth up. Let's read the truth together. You go ahead. We'll read it together. No, go back to the, the first one. There you go. Yeah. Here's the truth. I have, you have to read all together. <laughs> I have enough, and I am able to provide for myself and my family. God cares for my every need. I will be faithful with my tithes, and I will trust God to give me wisdom for the rest. And this truth creates feelings of strength, importance, it's inspired, being determination, contentment, at ease, and rest. How many wouldn't mind that? Let's quote this verse, Philippians 4.19. And this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. And then there's other verses for you to memorize. You catching on? Oh, she's got dozens and dozens of these lies. Cards. We're just giving you two right now. We'll keep giving more. Is that okay? Okay, so the next one is I don't trust anyone. Who's said that? Who's ever said that before? Because I have said it. I'd be like, oh, I can't even trust anybody. You know, you feel like that. But um, that lie can create unsureness, scared, unknown, fear, anxiety, and instability. And But God's truth is... We could read it together. We'll read God's truth together. Read the, read the lie first. Go oh, back to the lie. To read the lie. I don't want to no, read the lie. I want lie. them to say the lie. I want you to say the lie. <laughs> this is important. Ready? And just say it with an attitude. I don't trust anyone. All right. Now let's do, let's do the truth. Okay. So we'll read the truth to, together. Okay. There are some, some people, people who are undeserving of the truth of trust, but they are not everyone. I can give people time to show their character content and make a decision whether to trust them or to not to trust them. God is always trustworthy, and I will put my trust in him. Amen. Okay, amen. And so the truth creates the feelings of confidence, 
sure, peace, carefree, light, joy, and stability. And let's read the main verse. The main verse is Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Trust, trust in, in the Lord with all your heart, heart and, and do not lean on your own understanding. understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. I just thought that scripture is just like really clear. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And we're talking about heart. <laughs> like literally, he's like, I need you to trust me first yeah. and foremost. So what are they going to do with these cards? So you're going to take these cards, or you can take, you'll have, take them on your phone. You can print them out if you need to. If you need to print out the truth and put them on your mirror and read them, even looking up the other scriptures and reading the truth and the main scripture every day is the key. Like you want that truth to replace the lie and to be planted in your heart. And you're, you're going to be amazed what God does. I've done these in my own life and it's literally life transforming. It seems so simple and like, really? Like that's it? But it's just a, a piece of what God does, a part of the healing. And I'm just excited. I'm excited for everyone to do it because it's, it's amazing. It's life changing. And there are going to be testimonies from this. So I'm excited about that. Amen. So let me end with this. You know, Paul told Timothy, he said, for God has not given you a spirit of fear or timidity, but a spirit of power and love and a sound mind. That'll preach right there. Power, dunamis, power, and love, agape, agape, and a what? A sound mind. Remember that song back in the day, Jesus, be a fence? <laughs> All around me, there's a fence. There's a, there's, there, there's a strong hold that he puts around your mind. Sound mind means a stronghold that he puts around your mind. There's a fence around your mind, a protection around your mind. And the health factor that we're dealing with tonight is what we think, how we think. And I believe God wants to begin to touch people in your minds and change paradigms, change ways of thinking because of different experiences. We think a certain way. We don't trust because of certain things. And that's our mindset is locked in. But God wants us to have the mind of Christ. And he wants us to get a sound mind. The enemy would love to attack your mind. We're doing a class here with the equip group's battlefield of the mind. And that's where the great battlefield is, is in our minds. And God wants to bring give us a sound mind. There's a song that we have that I want to play, and then we're Sorry. going to pray. I just want to interrupt. I just, yeah. I just hit me when you were saying the Battlefield of the Mind class, and the other class we're doing is the finance class. That I think, Brother Dick, you're teaching. It, uh, like I didn't even think of that when these choices were picked. So it's like, whoa. Yeah, it's perfect. It's perfect. So there's a, what night is, I'm going to do a commercial right now. Thursday night is Battlefield of the Mind, and also the name of the class, the financial, is God's Way, and with his results, right? And his results. And so those two, if you want financial, learning about finances in a biblical way and also coaching in that uh, by people who, who, who have lived this thing and, 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 and God has got great, got, brought great fruit and also the mind. Thursday nights we have classes available here. You definitely want to sign up for that because we want to take this and make it practical and work it in our lives. Amen? So we're going to pray tonight. And I want you to just, I got the song, Sound Mind, okay? Um, and just stand with us, stand with us, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray, and I'll close in prayer. I'm going to have two sections of prayer up here tonight. On this side, I want to pray for those who, who, who need a physical touch in your body. We've been on to something since we got here last summer, and we've had healing services and healing days and healing different moments. And God's done miracles. Has anyone in this room received a miracle in the last nine, ten months in your body? Just raise your hand. Okay, look at that. Look at that. So, I mean, there's so many testimonies. Well, there's more. There's more. And so if you need a touch in your body, I just have faith tonight. The prayer of faith will save the sick. And God's going to heal you in your bodies. Amen? We're going to see it. One of the things that I believe... I. I keep hearing, and I don't know why I keep getting this, damaged organs. 
damaged organs, people whose organs, I'm talking about your kidney, your bladder, I don't know, was your heart, whatever it may be. That's not the only thing. Come up for any, if you need to touch your body, come here. And then on this side, we're just playing the song Sound Mind tonight. We're talking about the health factor in our mind. God wants to bring healing in our thoughts and in our minds and in our memories once and for all. And he can do it just like that. Is that right? And so if you just, and, and we just can anoint your mind. If anything, just we'll have oil here and just anoint your mind. And you have the mind of Christ before you get out of here. So if you, it, make sure you it, either one of those or get in on both of them, that's fine. But I'm going to close in prayer right now. I'm going to tell you something. Let me just say something real clear. The reason we're doing this is because we love everybody. And we're not at all trying to say we have arrived at something. We're all on a journey together. Amen? Is that okay? And so, and so if you have any questions for me at the end, I don't mind talking to you at all about any of this stuff. Um, because like we said, our life is an open book. This is the way ministry should be. The, the, we shouldn't be like the great big Wizard of Oz behind the ministry, Wizard of Oz behind the curtain. We need Toto to pull the curtain back and find out who the wizard is. He's pretty normal. He just has a booming microphone. And some ministries hide behind the booming microphone and the stage. But God's like, you know what? That's not how this thing works. We got to get real and transparent and just say, you know what? We've all walked in the same shoe leather, in the same terra firma, in the same world, and we're striving and following after Christ. Amen. Lord God, just lift your hands to heaven. Lord God, we just thank you for this night. We thank you for what you're doing in this house. There's a freshness that's coming into this atmosphere right now because you're bringing things into a, a, a reality and a, a normalcy into your house and taking away the spirit of religion and you're giving us a, a spirit of power and of love and a sound mind. So tonight, Lord, as we pray for people, I just thank you that minds are going to change, Woo, that minds are going to be cleared, that weights are going to come off, the spirit of heaviness is going to come off of people tonight. There's going to be freedom. I thank you on this side, Lord God, that bodies are going to be healed. Tumors are leaving. Cancer is leaving. Hypertension is leaving right now in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord. Let everyone go out tonight with safe journeys home. And for the rest of this week, let them be healthy, strong, anointed, obedient, excellent, joyful, full of wisdom, nice, kind, really good at everything they put their hands to do and off the hook in Jesus' name.